Endurance E-Racing World Championship Le Mans 24 Hours is brought to you by ESR Esports Network, Fleet Gaming, Sim Lab, Cusingfeld, Simplexity, ASTIC, and AMD Ryzen Radio. Good morning, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome back. We have now got Ossian Puhaka in the studio. And uh, still myself, Nick Newton, and we bring in news uh, immediately the number 97 uh, Elite Sim Sport Racing Team. We saw had uh, some problems earlier on, came into the pits, and I suggested it was something wrong because it was uh, a little bit earlier. We have gone into the garage and uh, I would imagine that they're going to come back and uh, hopefully have that car fixed, but it will uh, cost them laps, unfortunately. And good morning to you, Ossian, my friend. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, thank you, Nick. I'm doing fine. I had one hour of uh, RTR, had a pizza, and now I'm back here uh, with you in the booth. Pizza! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You know, what, you know what was special about the pizza? You made it. No, it's a vegan, vegan pizza. Oh, vegan. Yeah, I love those things. It turns yeah. out I love those things. Yeah, my partner, Kelly, is a, a vegetarian. She's not vegan, she's a vegetarian. Huh. I'm, I mean, I'm neither, but I just love... You just like it. <laughs> yeah, I just like it. <laughs> you know, call me crazy. I, yeah, I think I you like do, calling me... I, I do cre call you crazy, actually. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> But uh, going back to the race, uh, I mean, such a shame, shame for 97. Uh, they were doing, well, okay, they weren't doing brilliant, but they were still in the race so up until wrong. that moment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I did suspect there was something wrong because um, it was only a few laps after they did uh, a pit stop. And I thought that was uh, not right. And, uh, and he did spend a lot of time. Uh, there in the pits as well and I did mention well uh, we were through the commercial break that there was something wrong and um, as I was watching him and keeping an eye on him he uh, put himself back into the garage so uh, my suspicions were proved correct you know in terms of battles, we have the number 94 Musto GD Esports, uh, piloted by Matteo Boschetti, and he's about to be under some real pressure in not too long because, yeah. oh, oh boy. Was in the pits. Greg was in the pits, 53 car. The GTA yeah. leader. So. Voyager he... Pelesny in the 74 Juices Motorsport Club is coming through uh, Porsche curves now. So there could be a change of lead, actually, yeah. Oh, I think you're right. Lesney's coming into the pits as well. Oh, okay. Okay, that's interesting. Meanwhile, as I was saying, you know, the number 404, Lee Russell, of the 404 Glam Racing team, uh, yep. he is starting to catch up real quick to the back of Matteo Boschetti, and this is going to be 4A position in the GD3 yeah, class. Yes, both on uh, the 250 laps coming out of uh, Tete Rouge on the way down to the first Mulsanne. If uh, Lee Russell can get on to the back of Boschetti, he can get, a, get himself a slipstream, which he's trying to do. Boschetti's trying to shake him off, making the single move that he's allowed to. And uh, I think this will give Russell, he's getting out of um, Boschetti's uh, spray so we can see the corner. Breaking time. Yeah, good move. <laughs> yeah. That was not bad at all. So he's uh, he's trying to get the overtake done, uh, not quite yet, however, able to do it. And Boschetti, meanwhile, he's just out of the pit lane, in fact. I think last time around he went to the pit lane, had a very slow lap as a result of that, and now with that heavy car, trying to shake off the 404. And unfortunately, even though for, uh, for some people, 404 might be familiar from somewhere, uh, you know, in his yeah. mirror, that 404 is very much found. Yeah. <laughs> You can never find the page you're looking for. <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's a, it's a well-known number. Sorry, the page has moved. 
Yeah, yeah exactly. I think, great, I think it's a great number. I, I like the I like the color scheme as well, actually. But uh, yeah, well, let's see. It's getting closer this time. Definitely needs to get down to Molson corner. He's making the inside move. Bichette cuts it, uh, cuts it off, but then has a little, uh, a little bit loose on the rear. That might give uh, Russell a chance of oh, a better drive. Oh, look at he that! Got a stuck car bent. Oh, we've got a wheel off as well. Yeah, so the 47 is stuck on the slow Porsche car. Cars, it looks like one slow car oh. in sector one. Yeah, he's uh, in sector Roche. Yeah, he's at the lead again. Meanwhile, change of yeah. <laughs> meanwhile change of position for that fifth place in the GD3 class. I think finally the 404 has gotten ahead and it has. So those purple colors are now flying in the top Only five of the class. Yeah, it was uh, always on. They had a great position coming out with uh, Mosan Corner on the way down to Indy, and uh, got the got the move done. Uh, it was always going to be uh, that uh, position uh, was going to change and he's actually starting to already pull away as they move down into uh, the run down to the Porsche curves so the the speed uh, difference uh, is marked you could see it and uh, yeah he's luckily he's getting the move done or as far as uh, the 404 were concerned they were going to be losing time Absolutely, so it's great they got that one done early on and Lee Russell yep. can then continue on his way. 2 minutes and 21 seconds to the next car in class, that's the number 45 entry. Uh, DIS SRL Lab car, which had some issues earlier on, was in top 3 before that, so some disconnections. But uh, they could be potentially under threat for Ooh, the 4th four four place in class. Pits, actually. Oh, and you're right. A load of six hour mark as well now. Five hours, 57 left in the race. So five stops. Yeah. Those uh, teams now will be definitely looking at where they are in the fuel calculations, trying to make sure that uh, they get it right, ready to uh, cross the line uh, without having to do an extra sh uh, splash and dash if they can work it out. So there'll be uh, a lot of... Uh, paper being written on a lot of calculators out and uh, the last thing you want to do is be a little shy and have to dive into the pits uh nick you heard of this thing called excel right yes i have something <laughs> use it <laughs> oh Oh, actually, I, I do know that for a fact. I know a Finnish sim racing team that just doesn't use Excel. They still use, like, pen and paper, pretty yeah. much. Why not? If you've got your few calculations exactly. and uh, time left, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, and it's much easier to keep a track of uh, in a long race as well because you don't have you necessarily don't have that screen space available to you even if you have a laptop or something yeah. like that yeah. some people just prefer to do it the pen and paper way and you know that's fine i love the uh, mix of whatever new works, world. isn't it whatever works like exactly myself, i've got two screens and um, when i'm not driving and i'm uh, helping out the guys we will have the race on one screen like I have tonight, and um, and I've got uh, what I need for calculations on the other screen. Do it uh, every few laps, so if it's getting close to the end, when the driver crosses the start-finish line, I'll ask for um, fuel usage and uh, how much he's actually got left in the tank, and I'll make a calculation. So there's a constant uh, calculation towards uh, how much... Um, I need. I might need them to improve his um, his fuel usage per lap, and I might tell him to change his mix for one lap or two laps to get to the fuel uh, the fuel usage and number that I need him to do. So we we'll, don't have to uh, get an extra lap. I get to the end of the race, which happened a couple of weeks back, and uh, yeah, that's that's how I work with the guys. Yeah, and that sounds like, you know, it might work just splendid, to be honest. I love the mix of new and old tech. We'll get back yeah. to that soon. Just a quick uh, note for you all wondering about what happened to the 47. Well, unfortunately, the news are not good. The 47 is out of this race, classified as D and F. The so the second... is in the pits as well, and uh, in the garage. 
Yeah, so that's very interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Uh, starting to see some casualties then. Trouble next part of the race. This is the time of the day when things happen. Like I said a little earlier with uh, Alex, everybody thinks, yeah, we're down to seven hours, eight hours to go and see the finish line. This is when the concentration level needs to be more than 100%. Absolutely. It's uh, the most dangerous time of the day and you can ask any of the real life drivers or any of the sim drivers. They will tell you exactly the same. This is when you need to concentrate and uh, stay focused. And this is where you might need your teammates in the channel with you to keep you focused. You talking to you, saying you're doing a good job, asking you questions like fuel usage or whatever. Are you okay? How's the track? And, and anything just to keep that concentration level high. You know, we used to do, do this thing with um, word plays that when I was driving, you know, just to keep the concentration up, not yep. puns necessarily, but you know, for example, animal starting with a letter and then, mm. uh, yeah, uh, so you have, for example, you have a dog and the next one you would have to start the letter G, so gazelle, yeah. and next one with an E, so it would be an eel or something. And uh, things like that, you know, anything we could get our minds to stay active. So, for example, we cite all the Formula One World Champions from 1950 <laughs> out of memory. They but know I can do it. Back on track after oh. that uh, incident. All four wheels back on. Good job. We've seen earlier on that uh, the, the garage Ooh. crew couldn't. Uh, 74 has fun. The 74 has spun into the Mosan corner. He is back on track right now, but that's Wojta Polesny in the Deuces Motorsports Club from third place in GDE. I'm going to check, see, see if there's any damage on his car. Yeah, the wheel's still pointing straight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he's just uh, overcooked it on the exit. And that's, yeah, I, uh, I do that quite often, actually. Yeah, I, I think he was actually cooking it on entry, you know, breaking too late because I was watching it live and he just uh, spun across the track. Yeah, exactly. Uh, trying to push a little bit too hard, but hard, but uh, thankfully, in this case, the only damage is to his ego. Yeah, yeah to his pride. Uh, don't worry, I'll make sure I remind him of it quite often. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask him what went on there. He's, he's recovered. He's, oh, there's a car to the right. Um, GT3 by the look of it um, as he was passing um, Arnage. Let's see if I can find out who that was. Uh, it was 10th in class, if that helps. <sighs> yeah, dream Team. Okay, Dream Team, yeah. Got, got it. Uh, so. Pushed himself uh, a little bit too much on. Uh, Exit of oh no, it's corner. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's something that's something you really want to avoid at this hour. But just goes to show you once again what we talked about. I think part of it when you mentioned the uh, you know this being the most dangerous hours, this being the fragile point of the race. I think part of it is a mental thing. When you see the sun come up, yeah. you think automatically that the night is over, the worst part is over. You start it's to not, relax a little bit. It's not the worst part at all. It's um, it's definitely the most dangerous. I remember I did uh, the 24 Le Mans uh, two, three years ago in, a, in the stint plan. I managed to, to get sundown in sunrise. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it certainly it focuses the mind, especially when the sun's dropping. And then um, obviously later on, when I got back in the car, I managed to uh, the sunrise. You had to, con you had to um, put up with the sun glaring into your eyes coming in. It's, it's the same way it is when you're at um, Seabring. Uh, but it was it looked the circuit looked great. But uh, yeah, yeah, really concentrating. You, I was in a P2 car at the time, obviously having to contend with the P1 cars and then uh, make sure you pass safely with the GDE cars, where uh, the concentration levels have got to be high, especially in the, the gloomy light, which isn't uh, the best to drive in, that's for sure, because the, the headlights don't really help you at all in that kind of uh, lighting conditions. No, no, they don't. I mean, in the glare, really, 
I always compare the glare when I see it, you know, from wet track surface to what you see up here in winter time when it's snowing outside. Yeah. You know, when, when snow, it, it you get snow bounces, blind. It bounces off the road, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 That's what the guys will be getting here. They'll be getting uh, uh, glare back from the, the rain because I, I can still see the, the headlights uh, reflecting in the, in the rain in front of the, the cars. The, the tires are still leaving the trail because um, there's not a dry line fully still yet. You can see where the cars have been driving with the rubber on the track, but uh, the dry line really hasn't uh, materialized yet, especially in certain parts of the track. No, no, it hasn't. So, you know, it, it just adds a layer of difficulty to already a difficult, a difficult race. Yeah, the, the, the difficult level is... Uh, <laughs> 10.9 at least, if not 11, and uh, the guys are doing a great job. I know we've had uh, a few problems just in the last half hour, but that is to be expected, I think, in a 24-hour race. But uh, we've still got uh, 37 cars rotating around the track, 36 cars. But it's still a great... Um, Reflection of the quality of the the field today when we started with 43. Yeah, yeah. Hats off to the guys on track at the minute in this uh, difficult race that uh, it completely changed at about two o'clock in the morning when the first uh, rain showers came down and then uh, that settled for a bit and then an hour later, maybe 90 minutes, it uh, the heavens absolutely opened up. Yeah, so it was it was actually quite weird in the beginning. It wasn't even raining that hard. It just st started sprinkling and then it started coming down harder and harder and suddenly everybody was on yeah. rain tires. And deciding when to change the tires, wasn't it? Because yeah. uh, the grip on the track was really, really good. And uh, we saw the number 11 one move car stay on slicks for a long time when other cars were on uh, intermediates or wets. So... Um, yeah, it all depends on the confidence of the driver, to be fair. Speaking of speaking of confident drivers, the 77 Wanako car, Ricardo Costa, 4 minutes 12.4 last yeah, time fair. around. Yeah. I'm going to run a comparison. The next fastest GD3 car, and that is a GD3 car, was 4 minutes 16 point, yeah. uh, 4 minutes 14.4. Yeah, Excuse me, but those guys are well down the order. And the... They are still challenging. They are, in fact, running down the 777 Nightmare currently for the lead of the class. The gap sitting in at one minute and two seconds. And if somebody's thinking that's one minute, that's uh, eternity. Well, in racing, it would be. But look at the bottom left. Yeah, we got five hours left, almost six. Exactly. That's enough time for the 77 to come through. And don't forget, um, that could be on a pit stop because uh, we're not all on a different pit schedule. So this not, might not even shake out correctly uh, until deep into the last uh, kick into the race. So we'll see what happens. It's, I think the pressure f is more on Nightmare than it is on uh, the one aqua car, to be fair. I think you're right, because uh, when I was racing, I know many of uh, fellow racers will share the sentiment, it was always easier to do the chasing than the yeah. catching, because you could you could just get into that rhythm, you get into that mood when you're confident, and you feel like nobody can beat you, basically, and then when you see the gap running down, you know the guys are going to be a little bit scared, the gap's still over one minute, so they're not probably trying to think about it. I think, uh, to be honest, the triple seven guys are not even, like, uh, telling the gap to the driver that's trying to you know have him concentrate on something else because right now the gap doesn't matter so really when it's over one minute you don't want to think about it too much but it, when it's like 15 10 seconds you need to inform at some point that you know you you're about to have company yeah now i think uh, the main problem with if you're uh, the car in front and you're being chased down if you can't uh, ignore that timer that's uh, there for you and you keep looking at that instead of concentrating 100% on the track, you're just you're just falling into the trap. As uh, the nightmare nightmare car makes a little mistake at the first part of the four chicane, settles the car down and uh, gets back and to start another lap. But 
if you can't concentrate on the road ahead and you keep looking at how how far he's caught you so you know you're just worrying all the time every sector time you're looking at it oh i've lost more time i've lost more time you're just building Cards pressure 46 in sector two it's fun yep and i'm back on track back on track yeah the uh, s sr lab coming out of uh, the first uh, mulsanne chicken yep and uh currently trying to keep their difficult race still going in the right direction what a shame it was for those guys in the middle of the night disconnection yeah. both of their tip cars and that's just you know well i made puns back then but when you think back you really like feel for them because the mood in that room you got both of the teams there you made an effort you want to be there under the same roof be coordinated and then suddenly something just goes haywire yeah, the 45 car up in uh, 28th place, and the 46 is uh, sadly down in 35th, but still going around the track. Uh, there's a 10 lap uh, separation uh, between the guys as well, uh, but they'll not give up, they'll keep going. And uh, let's hope they make it to. The thing is now, it's all about getting to the checkered flag. It's uh, more about that than it is the positions when you. When you're down in that kind of position in the in the field, it's uh, getting to the end. After all this time, you've only got a few hours left, so it's a case of uh, banding together and pushing each other forward and uh, still concentrating on finishing it. You've done all this practice, you put all these laps in. Keep going. Don't uh, don't give up exactly that's what you want to do uh meanwhile to on a more on a more positive note uh, of guys who are keeping going the 47 is back on track right now i think you might have mentioned that earlier on but uh the sea wolf net race motorsport is confirmed to be back on track yeah. and they are 15 okay. seconds yeah they are 15 seconds ahead of team viaducten in the fourth place so that's Got suddenly there now yeah yeah that's suddenly grown really tight for the hypercar class uh, 15 seconds for the Brit. podium 18 Brit has pushed themselves up in the peak two in uh, the hypercar class that's uh, they'll be happy with that but obviously we've got the, the drillers pins and drillers cars just uh, a positive six on uh, p2 they're just in a league of their own at the minute yeah, I think they can, you know, seldom can you say that uh, you can afford a disconnect. But at this point, they truly can afford it. Of course, we don't hope them on it. Uh, let's hope they can continue being supreme, reigning supreme. But, you know, when you have that that kind of a sizable lead, it really becomes more about just maintaining your concentration. You know, what are you driving for? Don't try to be a hero, just bring the car home. And try to keep the concentration up, you know, focus on the right things, because it can be easy to lose the side of the long-term goal when you're doing lap after lap after lap for how however many hours yeah i think this this track you've got to concentrate because if you lack concentration at any time on any turn you're gone because a lot of portions of this track have got a wall waiting for you and you'll drive straight and you'll fall off and you'll go straight to the scene of the accident you've yeah exactly concentrate. you've just got to keep the concentration level as high as you can and uh, make sure that uh, you keep hitting your marks, your break points with this kind of weather, you've got to understand that your break point is a little bit earlier than it would be, in some cases a lot earlier than it would be, depending on the speed you're generating, so you've got to, you've got to be ready. Imagine being the guy who is coming in for the morning stints, because we are starting to soon see people coming in for the morning stints, the lucky few yeah, who have actually slept through the night. Yeah. And you last left the car in the evening when the sun was setting it was bone dry perfect conditions for racing and you're coming in the morning it's absolutely pouring it's down so it's practically hot. a lake down there how and you i mean you just woken up you maybe had half an hour or an hour at most you know get some breakfast and brush your teeth and get a cup of coffee down and go out there and race and uh, then your teammate tells you oh by the way it's wet out there so be careful yeah. Well, the first thing you got to do was get as much information as you can from the driver and uh, then get ready and uh, understand what he's saying to you. You know, is there a dry line? Where's the brake points? How far? 
in advance happy you've got to do the breaking points from uh, when it was dry heel you need as much information as a driver that's in the car as he can give you and then you've got to understand well, how's the brake balance is the brake balance going towards the rear of the car from uh, where it was this is a simply race car it comes back on track after going off at uh, Mulsan corner no damage um, yeah but you've got to get everything you can because when as soon as you take over you've got to try and uh, put the speed on and get up to the lap times that you need and maybe find your first lap as your sighting lap understand how the car's handling and then from there push on for the full stint you know speaking of guys i know it's yet another segue but bear with me here because uh, speaking of guys who are not losing sight of their goals and gonna try on and getting back in uh, Ibrahim Khan, he was just put in the YouTube chat, did 11 yeah. hours for the number 47 car. He said, and that's a great line, I'm gonna take a shower, get right back in. Yeah, uh, exactly. Good driver. He's fast lad, up from uh, Edinburgh in Scotland there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good, good driver, quick driver, and uh, I can understand. Yeah, he loves uh, driving. So I can understand what he's, uh, he'll be ready to go in, he'll, he'll be ready to enjoy uh, the next few hours, I'm not sure how long he's going to do, but uh, there's only 5 hours 38 minutes left, so he's definitely not going to do a double, do twice as long as that, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he takes it to the end, to be fair, we'll see, we'll see. Do we actually have a uh, fair share rule in this race? No, it's up to the team manager how long... Uh, the drive back and drive. No, oh, that's very interesting. I'm, I'm yeah. being, I'm used to the fair share rules, so you know, yeah, you can't be an. Yeah, we've got a minimum of three drivers in a team. You can't sign up for the the race unless you have three drivers, uh, and the maximum of five. Yeah, there was a team in a Finnish endurance racing event uh, this year. Actually, it's still 2020. Yeah, it's been a long year for everybody, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so. Up in, uh, down in January when the year was about to start, we did a 24-hour event at the Nürburgring. Yeah. And a couple of real-life drivers showed up. Uh, Juuso Puhakka was one of them, sharing my surname, no relation, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he races in the uh, one of the GD World Series in real life. I think it's okay. some sort of GD3 challenge. But yeah, he and his teammate were the only two drivers in their team. Mm -hmm. It's a 24-hour event, live. And they were up for about, uh, I don't know, must have been like 30, 35 hours. So they have no spotter at all, just the two guys, no spotter at all. So one guy was napping like two or three hours, did like four or five hour stints during the night, just so one can get a bit of sleep in, and they won their class. Yeah, well, don't forget the, the Le Mans uh, race, it, it was a two car effort until the 70s. Um, yeah, that's crazy. And then we'll, uh, Juices won the VEC championship with only Eric uh, Schmieder and Adam Baldwin in the car and that was a Le Mans 24 and they had to finish in the podium position minimum of uh, I think it was P3 they had to finish if uh, Singularity uh, won the race and they won the race and luckily Eric and Adam were able to take it to the to P3 so you know, yeah. the, the, and, and I know for a fact that the two guys were whacked. They were absolutely wrecked at the end of that race. Absolutely I mean, worn out. Yeah, I, I know that feeling when you're absolutely like just staring into the distance, not quite knowing what's going on, you know, just tired. You're happy, but you're also tired. Like all you want to do is sleep and you don't really feel like parting hard or alternatively you get past the point of being knackered and the adrenaline pumps in and you're ready to go for another six or seven hours of you know just uh, yeah. celebrating riding the high until you absolutely yeah. just run out of battery yeah that's that's what happens you, 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 you just batteries run dry absolutely run dry yeah all right everybody thank you very much and uh, after we're going into a commercial break and uh, when we come back, we'll have Yuno Leary and uh, 
I'll see you in the Buaga back in the box. Uh, for me, I'll be uh, having a quick break and I'll be going back into the race director room. So uh, thank you very much. It's been uh, great to be back with you, Ossian. Uh, and I'll see you next year, hopefully in Denmark, my man. Exactly. It's been absolute pleasure chatting to you, Nick. But let's go to the commercials now because I'm sure they are anxious to get their word out for you. Yeah. The Endurance E-Racing World Championship Le Mans 24 Hours is brought to you by ESR Esports Network, Tweet Gaming, Sim Lab, Husingfeld, Simplexity, Ace and AMD Ryzen Radio. Simplexity is a Danish designer and manufacturer of high-grade sim racing platforms. There are three different levels of platforms come in a variety of colors and configurations. Choose from the V4, built from 40 by 40 mm extruded aluminium profiles, the V8, built from 80 by 40 mm profiles, and the high-tier V12, built from 160 by 40 mm extruded aluminium profiles. Prices range from 470 to 750 euros. Go to facebook.com slash simplexity.eu and start a messenger chat to inquire more about the options for colors and customization. back to endurance e racing world championship the 24 hours of le mans the final race gdr 24 hours the fable the one and only we are back here racing for another five and a half hours it's been an exciting race married with rain drama and all sorts of excitement now what will we see during this final quarter well we're gonna find out and let's start by finding out who is sitting next to me in the commentary booth and why yes it is Ian O'Leary once more we meet and well we were here when the rain started and it still hasn't quite ended but what a progress it has brought to this race it's really changed things around quite a lot there have been a lot of uh, accidents I'm afraid, and a lot of LMP2 casualties uh, I can see at the bottom of the field right now, we've only got 10 left of the 16 that actually started the race um, an awful lot of them have uh, unfortunately had to retire from the race at some point because of the issues that they've had, but uh, yeah the sun's up now at least and uh, they can see where they're going ever so slightly uh, better than before, but uh, the rain is still uh, coming down the track is still really quite wet 
uh, and it doesn't look like we're going to end the race in dry weather conditions at all at the moment we've only got five and a half hours to go for the uh, conditions to dry up uh, and to be honest I can't really see them changing that much uh, from now until the end of the race it's going to be very interesting indeed looking forward to seeing how these final hours get on but I guess the main thing that's changed while I was away is that Seawolf Net Race uh, lost their second place uh, that they had giving Drillers Esports a six lap lead but yeah, I know you mentioned it just before the break I see him but um, Ibrahim Khan saying uh, he doesn't want to lose P2 in any way he wants to get in that car straight away and try and salvage what he can from that race and uh, from this race and he's yeah he's super super motivated to try and get this second place um, for his uh, his team Seawolf Net Race yeah, he is, uh, as we see, the uh, 337 pulled by Angus Tong spinning out at the Musan corner. So they're going to get back on track, thankfully, Team Rookie. And, uh, well, yeah, uh, difficult conditions, as they say, catching out. So you were mentioning uh, 47, Ben Crooks currently in that car. They, I believe they did have a disconnection sort of issue earlier on and they just disappeared from the track pretty much uh, spent a bit of time an hour right back and you know what a hero what a hero for the whole team but especially Ibrahim Khan you know he was in that car for 11 hours he said he's gonna take a shower he's gonna come right back he doesn't want to lose that uh, P number two and right now well, they are one lap behind the 68, but the good thing is that that 47 has been on an almighty form all day long. So, you know, they just might do it. I reckon they just might do it come the end of this event. Yeah, quite possibly. They've definitely uh, got the pace to, to do it. I think definitely with uh, with Khan at the wheel. I don't think he's got the team to support him that maybe he would have liked. And uh, if he did have a, a team of similarly um, talented drivers, then he might be able to actually uh, challenge Drillers Esports. But uh, he's being partnered with Ben Crooks, who's driving at the moment, Marcelo Tocco and Lindus Lundvall, who are not quite as good as the Drillers Esports drivers. With all due respect, so let's, uh, let's not forget, um, you know, they are still very good drivers in their own right and uh, I'm sure they will be able to get a podium at the very least maybe even a second place but uh, not quite as good as Ibrahim Khan who's arguably one of the fastest drivers on this grid at the moment um, especially in race pace you saw in the first few hours he was leading the race uh, taking down guys like Henry Sinek and uh, Martin Hemmingson eventually I think that uh, even if Seawolf had the pace of drillers I think that drillers had the edge on the strategy anyway but still Still, it was great to see uh, Ibrahim Khan put up a great fight. It always is, it always is, and that's gonna, you know, rise his stock as well, where if he wants to elevate himself, or, you know, sometimes you have to elevate yourself out from a team, where you may find yourself, you know, a little bit too good for your team, and that we always have to be careful saying that, because we don't want to sell anybody short, but there are good drivers, which everybody here is, and then there are great drivers, and great drivers are far, few and far between, that's why they're gold great otherwise they would just be average and uh, i think uh, you know after witnessing what i witnessed today ibrahim khan definitely uh, counts as among the great drivers and would be interesting to see what he could do when partner with uh, with a bit more competitive lineup but there is also an alternative which is to elevate the team around you if he wants to take this progress on if he trusts the sea wolf net race motorsport guys you know that 47 team he wants to get the 47 team going then you know he needs to start taking a leadership role you know lead by example spur his guys on share data you know make the guys around you better drivers and it might not be at his level uh, still come next year come next season but they might just be you know good enough to give him the support he needs to fight for those podiums and fight for those uh, victories and fight for the championship even you know so it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with that team going forward but Ben Crooks right now certainly no slouch still behind the wheel of that car was the one who was pulling the 47 of course when they had that heartbreaking disconnect and he did a 347.4 last time around so that was four seconds faster than the 68 team and that was only 
and I say only 1.9 seconds off the leading number 10 so he's still good he's still doing very very well behind at 47 but I can't wait to see what Ibrahim can do once he returns from the shower and gets behind the wheel of Tapon. I think we'll have a cracking battle for a second overall. Yeah, I think we will get that battle uh, in the end. It's about a lap and a half at the moment uh, between the two of them, so the gap's pretty large, but there's uh, some very fast drivers to come, and as I say, Ben Crooks is taking time out of Bradley Brockies already, um, and when Khan gets in the car, I think that uh, is just only going to accelerate, really. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, and, yeah, if he, he can't do it on his own. That's uh, that's what we're saying here, really, Ibrahim Khan. It's all well and good, uh, and we're, this is what we were talking about with Cam uh, yesterday evening, is that uh, you can't have one really fast driver if there's no other good drivers around them to support him. You could have the best driver in the world, but if you're going to put me in the car after him stint, then uh, you're definitely not going to win. So, you know, you need a team around uh, good drivers to actually support uh, your good driver. And, and that maybe that can come from the, the driver themselves motivating everyone around them um, and uh, it, yeah just improving the team around them like you say um, but, uh, but but also it can come from the team management uh, maybe just rec recruiting some higher level uh, talent or maybe even the driver will uh, look elsewhere to see if uh, there are oppor other opportunities for them because uh, while with all the respect to Seawolf I would say they're maybe not a top tier racing team but definitely a, a very high second tier team not one of the real big names but uh, uh, always present have been around for quite a long time and uh, so he, he's in a good team right now he's not in a bad team that's that's uh, that's for certain but um, he might want to move himself into one of the top tier teams in the next couple of years and uh, that's a decision that he's going to take um, or not take depending on, on what he wants to do um, and well, at the moment from seeing here in the YouTube chat saying how he wants to uh, get this P2 he's very motivated on himself trying to get better and I don't think he's blaming those around him for giving himself this situation I think he's relishing the challenge actually yeah I think you're right and that's uh, that tells a lot about drivering that you know if you get it's not if you get down every driver will go down at some point uh, as will every boxer get down it's not how you get down it's how you get back up from going down and how you carry yourself after that and that's a big moment for ben crooks oh dear me almost lost it on the final chic uh, for chicane there but thankfully able to gather that up together and uh, maybe pushing a bit too hard on these dreary conditions but yeah uh elevate himself or elevate the team basically gonna come down to that and it's storyline we are certainly quite eager to follow here now deviating from the 47 chest for a moment if i may the gde battle we were talking about earlier well it ain't quite a close one anymore well Close is, of course, a relative term when it comes to, you know, sim racing, when it comes to endurance events, 24-hour events, but that gap has opened up a little bit this last hour or so. The number 53 Musto GD Esports seems to be on the lead of that class, despite their different pit strat, mind you. So they are doing very well for themselves, but they're not out of the woods just yet with Wojta Polecny and and Blase Musk uh, breathing down his neck. So 53, 74 and 51. Musto GD Esports, Deuces Motorsports Club and WOSR iZone performance uh, currently locked in the three-way fight for the class honors difference currently between the three cars one and a half minutes. So that's something we are going to have to keep at least one eye on even. Yeah, it is it's very close in GTE at the moment, and uh, it's been a great battle between those three teams for the most part. And, of course, Satellite Racing were involved earlier on. Uh, Jimmy Nasula started that car, doing a great job. Tom Capusta was in there as well. Um, and at the moment, Ian Paper has just brought that car in. Uh, he's in the pit lane at the moment. I believe he went for a spin at uh, some point. 
uh, in the recent past. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's into the pit lane now, as is uh, Matteo Bruschetti of uh, the Musto car. So uh, yeah, some pit stops happening um, and a great battle in GTE. And as uh, as Nick r reminds us as well, not only do you need a balanced team in terms of your, your skill level, but uh, also in terms of your driving styles, um, you need to have uh, people who are generally like the similar things in a car. You can't have um, somebody who likes to uh, really slide the car through every corner um, and then someone who hates oversteering cars I, I can say for one that I, I would hate oversteering any car in any form I just can't deal with it and I can't move very fast with it and if I was to be put with someone who can only deal with that then that's going to be an issue because yeah exactly there you go that's the kind of issue that uh, you'd have to you'd have to uh, come across um, and you need to kind of put these teams together in kind of driving styles as well as ability and there's a lot of uh, people are surprised I think about the amount of juggling that you have to do when you're putting together a team it's a little bit more complicated than you might think sometimes absolutely I mean and even putting on you know multiple teams of the same branch I know many of these uh, organizations have more than one team racing here or racing in various series uh, which is uh, actually I think the route the 47 team might go with uh, going forward have that one team that really is like elite hardcore and then have the other team which is uh, you know more about the old guys you know more about the established core of the team still looking to do well but not quite so hardcore in their approach having a little bit of uh, I wouldn't say laissez-faire attitude but rather having a bit of a you know a more relaxed way of carrying themselves not quite so not pushing themselves quite so hard not looking for those uh, not expected to win championships which is uh, what I was uh, trying to chase after but speaking of uh, you know preferences the most uh, uh, bizarre thing I've ever seen in my years of commentating sim racing and driving sim racing was the partnership of Enzo Bonito and Gregor Hutto at Team Redline. This was in 2015 uh, when they were doing, in another simulator, they were doing a GD World Championship Series and they were driving the same Porsche. I think it was an R rough actually RUF yeah it was you know uh, Porsche licenses and all that so it's still a tricky car to handle by any means GD3 class so Gregor Hutto, uh, no Enzo Bonito would start, he would start and he's this uh, fiery Italian driver who drives with the rear of the car, I mean he was, it was incredible, he was sliding it all over the place, he was pushing it so hard and he was like over half a second faster than the finest sim racers at that time on that track, like there were some top tier talents in there and he was still beating everybody around and I think we have a problem with the oh we have a problem with the LMP2 class leader Cliff Van Deveen hang on let me find is that. he out let's see I'm gonna cycle through as well he's currently well I'm seeing some bushes at the moment and that's oh he's gone back to the pit lane oh, no. oh dear oh dear this could be another big change in LMP2 and uh, that will not be the first time we've seen the leader have issues like this we saw Dennis Jordan with Bird First Edge Esports have exactly this problem earlier on. It looks like they are actually going to regain a podium because of this, because Cliff Van der Vin has disconnected or something has gone wrong for that team now. And uh, that means Ernest Lappins is going to take the race lead now. He is, he is. So it is the 17 Pins in Drillers Esports. And what an event this would be for them. They have their car on the overall lead to number 10 and they would also now inherit the LMP2 class lead so taking both of the faster classes here both of the so-called prototype classes and winning them at Le Mans that would be absolutely the result they'd be looking for uh, in an event like this but man you gotta feel for the 334 they were the underdogs they were the guys nobody believed in and they found themselves fair racing team found themselves in an class lead and then suddenly just disconnect and everything thrown out the window Whew, man oh man can't imagine how cliff van der Wien is uh, feeling right now yeah you wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now it's a, it's a really really heartbreaking one for him 
um, and uh, not nice to see for uh, that uh, for that team. Uh, I was really rooting for them actually, like a good underdog. Um, I know you're not, not really supposed to root for people when you're doing commentary, but you know it's always nice to see a uh, it's, you know quietly you can. Uh, it's always nice to see a little bit of uh, an underdog rise to the fore, and they were the only team to have not had any issues um, in this in this race so far. Uh, and I feel like when I said that earlier, I might have jinxed them ever so slightly, but uh, you know these things do happen from time to time to uh, Cliff Van der Veen. It's uh, happened again, and now uh, Ernest Lappins is leading from Drillers Esports, and I thought their race was uh, pretty much over um, by the time I'd finished uh, commentary with it. Um, with about uh, nine hours in, uh, with 15 hours to go, they were still languishing in the lower parts of the top 10, struggling to make their way through traffic, struggling to make any progress, really, but they've quietly been jumping up the order, capitalising on issues for some others as well, um, and now they find themselves back into the race lead for the first time since they had that incident with Varga, if you remember. Their rear wing came off when they were completely rear-ended by Marcel uh, Chinsik. It wasn't exactly Chinsik's fault, though. There was a spinning car in front of, uh, I think he was Lappins at the time, he slowed down Chinsik didn't quite slow down enough the rear wing came off of the Drillers Esports car, I thought that was it for them then because Burst Edge Esports were going to run away with it supposedly, but now look what's happened, they're back to the lead it's come full circle and Burst Edge Esports have ended up back on the podium again after being demoted to 6th place only 3 hours ago they're back up onto the podium, it's such a topsy-turvy race and there is so much going on within it, it's it's almost hard to keep up with, but it's also very exciting. Yep, and we also have an incident under under review between car number 15 and car number 334, so that could potentially spell even more trouble for the 334 fair racing team as they have found themselves in a bit of trouble with the number 15 Simply Race entry, and that would be a multi-class incident. Simply Race, of course, in the GDE class, whereas the 334, as we mentioned, being in the LMP2 class, the former LMP2 class, class leaders and I can't help but shake I can't help but wonder if those two things are somehow connected yeah, quite possibly. Um, and I did see that uh, the Simply Race car had had a few yellow flags in, in quite quick succession. They were having a bit of a bad bad patch, really, with Matt Webb at the wheel. I saw at least two yellow flags um, that were caused by it. Um, so they, they were having a bit of an unfortunate time of things, but they have got two laps to the car behind them. ID Simsport have uh, really fallen away, actually, in the... Uh, or the, the 177 has. Um, they're down below some of the GT3s at the moment. Um, but the other car is a good two laps behind Simply Race at the moment. Um, so it looks like Simply Race are going to uh, consolidate fourth in this race and second in the championship as well because Musto look like they are going to take it. Although that championship does still hang in the balance. Ooh, Lappins, he had a bit of an issue with the traffic there. Whoa, that's very, very close. That I think is the... That's one of the beautiful liveries we were oogling on about earlier. The purple car finally getting through and getting through the other one as well. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not not out of the woods yet, as I mentioned. Er, er, Ernest Lappins, the pro, uh, Pinsim Drillers Esports certainly have to make it to the finish line of this race before they can start celebrating. And as we see, some tired drivers, and not only are the tired drivers a problem when they're piloting your car, but they can also be a bit of an issue when they're piloting somebody else's car. Because, I mean... It, it doesn't really, you know, if you are, even if you are in tip-top shape, even if you are fresh, even if you are well alert, sometimes you just cannot avoid an incident if somebody, you know, just decides to have a mental dose of behind the wheel of a car. So, you know, that's uh, that's going to be something, that's going to be something you have to be aware of, certainly, as they are coming towards the end of this race. And mind you, uh, it does feel a little bit strange that uh, at 8 a.m., 7, 8 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever the time may be uh, 6 a.m. for you 8 a.m. for me right now we are coming to the last five hours of Le Mans instead of coming to just past the halfway point basically 
Yeah, it's, uh, I'm kind of glad about it actually because when you see the sun oh, yeah. rising, um, it's 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 normally a, a quite a daunting prospect seeing so many hours to go still. I think it's better this way around. It starts at midday European time, finishes again at midday European time. Uh, well, it started at 1 p.m. European time here today, uh, because or yesterday, should I say? Because the clocks went back uh, last night, as uh, you will know if you were tuned in or, or if you were awake in any capacity um, you remember um, and uh, yeah it finishes at midday European time as all GTR 24H races do well all the EWC races do anyway the sprint series uh, obviously don't but uh, yeah the uh, EWC always finishes at midday and often starts as well um, but more often than not anyway um, so yeah I think that's a, a personally a, a good thing um, partly because then it means that the race is actually done by 11am here in the UK which means you still got the whole afternoon really um, and it, I think it, it it makes things a little bit easier on you because when uh, when you're really tired uh, like uh, like we will be at the end of this uh, at the end of this race um, I feel like I feel like just uh, seeing the uh, the hour tick down through the middle of the night you can see there was that, that you know ticking off milestones like one third of the race to go and stuff like that when you're still in the middle of the night it's a very rewarding feeling and I think that uh, for all of the drivers as well it's a very rewarding feeling uh, as well so uh, see so yeah, I'm a fan personally of this midday to uh, midday kind of uh, races rather than starting at um, you know sometimes 4 p.m. these some of these 24 hour races and when you think about how many hours you are up before the actual start of the race of, at 4 p.m. that's still quite a lot of hours and then if you do the whole 24 hours that's quite a lot of hours uh, but if you're doing it midday you're just waking up at something like seven hours you're only really awake for 27 hours uh, sorry 29 hours by the time the race actually finishes which is a lot better uh, than being awake for something like 30 or, or 35 hours that's that can be really draining yeah it can be it can be and you know i've been there being awake 30 or 35 hours and uh, i tell you at some point your mind just it feels like you're drunk but in not in a pleasant way it just uh, feels like you can't concentrate to anything you're just uh, being a zombie pretty much uh, so that's that's one of the things you gotta watch out for uh, in these endurance events and uh, as, dri as a driver, as a commentator, as anyone who is even remotely involved in any sort of uh, organizing and things that happen to go on. Now, quite curiously, satellite racing is still out there. They are a long way back. I mean, a long way back from any GDE podium battles or even good points battles. In fact, they are middle in the middle of a GD3 pack, in the middle of a bunch of GD3 uh, cars, but they are still out there. And I couldn't help but notice, you know, uh, I had my ears rise up, almost perk like, a, like with a dog, you know, ears perk, when I saw its name driving that uh, GDE car for satellite racing, Jimmy Nisula. And now, first of all, I noticed him because he's Finnish. That's that's the that's the one thing I noticed. I was like, huh, I haven't seen a Finn drive here. I know Jonas Raivia used to drive a lot of uh, R Factor 2, and I think there were a couple of others as well. But uh, Jimmy Nisula is a name I didn't expect on this side, but he's also done uh, Finnish Sim Racing Championships. I think he was even a finalist. Uh, must have been 2019, I think it was. But anyway... A uh, really promising young driver, uh, making name for himself, you know, not quite at the top yet. And oh, here we get a decision between the incident between Simply Race and a fair racing team as well. Lap two, uh, 268, and that was a drive through for the fair racing team 334. So, you know, disconnect and a drive through, that's uh, not a pleasant last hour for them. But yeah, this was doing well at least. Glad to see the team still out there on the track. Yeah, I'm glad to see that they're still out there as well. And Nisula was doing a great job earlier on. Qualified that car on pole position many, many hours ago on Friday night in the two qualifying sessions. He topped um, the way. Well, he didn't top the first session, but in night qualifying, he was really much, uh, really quite a lot quicker than those around him. 
um, the likes of uh, Wood of Sim Racing, Musto, um, and Juices. He was a lot quicker than them. It completely destroyed a field of great GT drivers. So it was a great drive for him. It started the race uh, and did really well. Did a lot of driving actually in the first eight hours or so. Uh, rested up and now he's out again for the final five and a half, five hours and a bit. So uh, yeah, he's uh, making his way through the field now. It's, I don't even know if he's going to beat all the GT threes in this race, but I don't think they really care at that point either. They just want to get to the end of the race to say that they've accomplished something. And uh, yeah, that is uh, an accomplishment that is none too small. It is. Uh, it, it's a big achievement to get to the end. That's what they're aiming to do at this point. Um, nothing much more than that, really. But in LMP2 at the moment, I can see the other satellite racing car, the 64, had a little bit of a better race, less incidents, certainly. Um, but Matt Strand is closing in on Marco Slamsey in the drive game seat car, and the gap is about two and a half seconds at the moment. Yep, so it's getting closer and closer, and I think by the time we return from this commercial break, they will be right on each other's neck. So we'll be looking forward to that, and see you soon.